the five elements you'll find on every e-bike. Stick around to see what they are. Hey everyone, I'm Dustin. I have nearly 20 years experience in the bike and e-bike industry. And today I'm gonna to show you the five elements you'll find on every electric bike. Before I get into it though, hit that subscribe button below. Stay in touch with us here at 630. Be the first to know about all the new content we're putting out, giveaways we do, and of course, new product releases. Now, really quick before I get started, this is the simple step through e-bike from 630. If you wanna see this along with all of our other e-bikes, go down in the description. It's linked down there. You can check them all out or it's linked in the corner of the video. All right, so if you're thinking about getting an electric bike or you're new to e-bikes and just doing some research, you may be wondering like, what, what goes into an e-bike? What is an e-bike made up of? What are the components on an e-bike that are different than a regular bike? So I'm gonna explain them all to you. There's really five um, that make an e-bike an e-bike and separate it from a regular bike. So let's start with the most obvious of the five, which is first is the motor. Now, in this case, the motor is contained in the rear hub back here. So this is called a rear hub motor. You may be looking at this video right now, looking down and saying, wow, I can't even tell there's a motor in there. If you didn't really know to look for it, you may just look at this and find that it looks like a standard wheel. Now you can tell the hub is a little bit bigger than a standard wheel, and the motor is actually contained inside of that. This is a 500 watt rear hub motor, a 750 watt rear hub. The, the hub would be even larger and probably a lot more noticeable. Also, this is a 26 inch wheel. So the motor on a smaller wheel, like a 20 inch is gonna be more noticeable because it's gonna take up a larger uh, amount of the wheel. So there's three locations your motor can be in on an e-bike. There is the rear hub, the mid drive, and the front hub. Now, a mid-drive motor is typically located right below the crank here, or right in the crank, so to speak, and that's going to drive the crank, whereas the rear hub is powering your rear wheel, and the third location is the front wheel, which is a front hub motor, which would be located in the front wheel. Rear hub motors um, are great for normal, around-the-town riding. They're gonna be less expensive than mid-drive motors. Mid-drive motors are really great for a lot of uphill off-road riding where you need a lot of torque um, or heavier riders, let's say over 250 pounds, mid-drive is a good option as well because it's gonna give you uh, a lot more power up steep hills and like I said, more torque. Uh, the front hub motors are great for just around town riding, typically gonna be a little less expensive than both the, the mid-drive and the rear hub. Um, not going to be as good though for the total power output, but again, flat ground, ground cruising, uh, front hub motor is a good option. The other thing I will say about a front hub motor, very easy to replace. Just got to swap the front wheel out for a new complete wheel that you would plug in, in the situation of maybe your front hub motor would go out. Rear hub is going to be a, just a little bit more difficult because you've got to actually take the wheel off, put the chain back on, and the mid drive would probably be the most difficult out of all three of those. But those are the three things, three uh, motor locations, and of course you're going to find a motor on every single e-bike. Now, something that goes hand in hand with the motor is two, two elements, so number two and number three, which is called the controller and the battery. Now, of course, on an e-bike, you need a battery to power your motor. Again, the battery, just like the motor, can be located in many different places throughout an e-bike. In this situation, we've got it mounted in the rear rack here. You have also can have it on the, the seat tube. You can have it on the top tube. You can have it inside the tube. You can have it under the tube. As the design of e-bikes are continuing to evolve, you're seeing batteries located in all sorts of places throughout the frame um, of a bicycle. Now, it's, um, it's personal preference on what you like, what is best for your riding habits, what aesthetic you like. Uh, the rear rack we like because it's easily removable and easily changeable. Um, the inside frame ones are cool too because they look nice, they're concealed. Sometimes it can be challenging to replace those batteries depending, just depending on the setup and what it is. In some situations, it's not challenging. Um, behind the seat tube battery location is very popular as well. Some people like the battery to be mounted in the middle of the frame um, to keep more balanced weight distribution. Um, but again, any location 
of the battery can work just fine. It depends also on the geometry of the bike. You can tell actually with this frame, putting a battery behind the seat tube is not possible because of the curvature of the seat tube that we have here and the seating position and geometry we're trying to achieve, which is a forward pedaling design. So in this case, it makes most sense to put the battery in the rack. Now, again, depends on the geometry of the bike, what you're trying to obtain um, in terms of the geometry of the seat, the sitting position of the rider as well. That dictates a lot of times how e-bike manufacturers place the battery on the e-bike. Now, the third element that goes hand in hand with your battery is something called a controller. Now, when you look right here, you're looking at this and thinking, I don't see a controller anywhere. That's because actually the battery is located just right here. So this little line right here is the beginning of what's called the controller. The battery actually plugs into the controller. The controller is the hub, the brain of the entire e-bike. That is essentially what takes the power, transmits that to the motor, and also transmits all that information up to your display here. A lot of times when you find people having issues on their electric bike or something's gone wrong, first thought is it could be the battery dying. If it's not the battery, a lot of times it's the controller. Um, maybe something short-circuited um, or something got pinched, a wire got pinched. And actually inside here, you can remove what looks like a little silver battery with wires coming out of it. Um, and those are located on, those are on all e-bikes. And usually they're contained in some sort of housing. Um, I've seen it sometimes where they are on the exterior, but a lot of times they're either gonna be in a plastic housing, or if you have a battery mounted behind the seat tube, you're gonna find usually like a little metal enclosed compartment under the battery, and that's where your controller is gonna be as well. In all situations that I've seen, you can most of the time get to your controller if you need be. Um, we've actually had situations where we send out replacement controllers to customers and either they do it themselves or a mobile mechanic can um, install a new controller if it should go wrong. So the great thing is that they, sh they are accessible in most cases, which is great for the you know, future maintenance you may need down the line. If something goes wrong on your e-bike, you don't have to replace the whole thing. You could take a look firstly at the battery, the controller, and also the motor. So it allows you to um, be able to repair them. Now there are different types of controllers, more sophisticated controllers, uh, depending on you know what kind of e-bike you have and what kind of capabilities your e-bike manufacturer is trying to allow for in the display will require a more complicated controller, which would require more wires coming out of the controller. So as an example, we have a, a few e-bikes that have rear tail lights or headlights. Well, you need to actually send a wire from the controller up the, to, to the display and the light needs to plug into the controller as well. So you can send that information from the display to the controller to the light. So the more elements or features you have, the more complex your controller is going to be. Now, it just means that if you were going to replace the controller down the line, there's going to be more connections that you have to deal with. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. But if you were to open up your controller and let's say you've got all sorts of features, like I said, front headlight, rear headlight, um, and then there's also different features available on displays like a walking feature or a cruise control. A lot of those elements require additional cables and a more sophisticated controller. So if you open it up, you may see all these wires and think, oh my gosh, you know, but again, if you're just replacing it, it's really plug and play. You can unplug them and then go from there. So every e-bike, you're gonna have a controller. So you're gonna have a motor, you're gonna have a battery, you're gonna have a controller. Now, as we come up here to the handlebars, there's two elements up here you're always gonna find. One is going to be a um, display and another is going to be a pedal assist um, button, which is gonna allow you to move pedal assist up and down. Now the display can be located in several places. It can be here by the, the grip, it can be in the middle. Displays can also really vary. Now this is a digital readout display that you can actually read. You can see your battery. It tells you the miles per hour. Um, it also tells you what level of pedal assist you're in. 
But the display doesn't always have to be digital. It could be as simple as a few red lights and green lights indicating, okay, you're in this pet level of pedal assist. It can also give you a power indication as you're doing the pedal assist. It could go from um, red to yellow to green to basically telling you how much power you're using. So it can be a simplified display. Now, the type of display you have is not necessarily an indication of how good or bad your motor is or how good or bad your battery is. Um, it's just a choice by the manufacturer to either put a digital display or not. It can save a few dollars off the cost of an e-bike by using a more simplified uh, display. I mean, I would say displays cost level, you know, could run from as little as probably $5 up to as much as probably $50. I would say the average is somewhere in the $10 to $20 range um, as a cost, you know, from the manufacturer. So again, um, you're going to see these in all sorts of different sizes too. You're going to see bigger displays, smaller displays. Uh, this particular e-bike has a little bit of a smaller digital display, so we can try to keep the simplicity of the bike and um, have it look more like a regular bike than stand out as a glaring e-bike. But again, totally up to you. If you like to have a big display so you can easily read out your miles per hour, that's an option as well. A lot of times you can also uh, change your display. The connections are usually sometimes in this front housing here and you can plug and play and unplug it and plug it back in. Now you can see that the, uh, the brakes are also connected in all of this as well. In this case, we have a throttle as well, which complicates it a little bit more. The throttle actually is not one of the five features you're going to find because not all e-bikes have a throttle. That's sort of a bonus feature that you find on a lot in America. Uh, but not necessarily in other countries. And a lot of e-bike companies don't include throttles. Okay, so hand in hand with the display is our fifth and final element that you'll find on every e-bike, which is your pedal assist up and down buttons. Now, in many situations, you're gonna have, uh, actually not in many situations. In this situation, you have the pedal assist plus and minus buttons included in the display. So it's a one, all in one thing where you have your display here and you have your plus minus buttons right here as well. They're really nicely located by your thumb so you can get to them while you're still gripping the grip to allow for you to still safely steer the bike. Now in a lot of, a lot of times you're gonna have a display here in the middle and you're just gonna have your plus minus and power button off here to the left. And it's just gonna be um, basically three buttons, an up arrow, a down arrow, and a middle button, that's your power button. Usually that's gonna be located by your left thumb here as well. And that would be in a situation where you'd have a middle display. But on every e-bike, you're going to have some, um, some button somewhere to allow you to press, press the pedal assist up or down. Now, I've also seen it on some very high-end mountain bikes. You may have it on the frame here as well. Uh, to do the up and down button right here as well. Now in that situation, they had it on the frame and they also had it up here. So they had it in two locations, but you're gonna have it in at least one location. So other than that, everything else that you're gonna find on here is typically features and elements you're gonna find on a regular bicycle. Of course, you're gonna have brakes, you're gonna have tires, you're gonna have grips. All of those things are a standard to have on any bike. But the five things I just mentioned, which is the motor, the battery, the controller, the display, and the pedal assist buttons, those are the five things you're gonna find on every e-bike that really make an e-bike an e-bike. So if you have any other questions at all, please comment below or reach out to us, the team at 630.com or call us 310-982-2877. And again, you can find this e-bike linked in the description below. If you're in the market for an e-bike and you don't know what you're looking for, go on over to our website. We have a proprietary body fit quiz. You can answer a few questions about your body and your life, and we'll recommend the perfect e-bike for you. In addition to that, we have a 30-day test ride your e-bike policy. If you don't love your electric bike in the first 30 days, send it back, no questions asked, no money out of your pocket. We also warranty the e-bike for the first year. Anything that goes wrong in the first year, parts and labor will take care of. Lastly, we have a Facebook group called 630 Peddlers and we also have an app on the, in the app stores. The Peddlers group's a great place to go in advance of purchasing because you can ask thousands of riders questions about our bikes, see what their opinion is before you commit to buying. Then once you have yours, you can post in the group, make friends, it's a ton of fun and you can download the app, compete on the leaderboard. That is a lot of fun as well.
So thank you for sticking around and don't forget, it's your journey, your experience, enjoy the ride.